What's up guys? So today I'm going to talk about the quickest path for you to learn computer science. So there, I think computer science is one of those fields where there is a ton of great resources online, but there is also a lot of noise. And since this is a very, uh, this, this field has been growing ridiculously for, for the last 10, 20 years. And there are a lot of people who majored in different fields and want to get into computer science. Probably because it has a lot of great opportunities. It's a very interesting, very stimulating field. And it pays well. So it gives you, a certain, it gives you comfort. Uh, so this, this video, especially, it's for students that want to learn effectively, but also especially for those who want to transition to computer science, but they don't want to go back to school, maybe because it takes too long, they think it's inefficient, because when you go to school, you have to take a bunch of classes that in the end, they're interesting, but they're not that useful for the purpose of actually learning what you want. It's kind of like Peter Thiel, which is a Facebook investor, always says that school is like cable TVs, cable TV back in the day. Because today a lot of people use Netflix, right? So when you bought cable TV, you just wanted to watch Game of Thrones. But you have to buy a bunch of channels you have no interest in just because they make you. So school oftentimes is like that. And in this video, I'm gonna show you guys the quickest, more efficient way of having a very good education online with free resources. Uh, so what are the options available today? You have boot camps. I've done one boot camp actually. I, I'm actually studying computer engineering, but during summer I went to a boot camp because I thought I lacked practical skills and it was a great experience I think boot camps are a great option but you need a little bit more to be not a little bit you need more stuff to be effective in my opinion and I'm gonna show you guys what those things are there is also open source society that I'll show you guys in just a second which is a list on github of online courses you can take to get a computer science education I think it's great it's great but it takes too long as well so there is a lot of resources out there but in my opinion there is a lot of noise so I'll give you guys the quickest way to learn through those online resources but you, you won't be like going from one side to the other. The problem of being self-taught is that you don't have a structure. So that's my purpose here. I want to give you guys a structure. And I guarantee you guys that if you follow this path, you'll go from beginner to pretty well prepared. And I'd say you would be prepared to, I'd argue that you could prepare even to interview for big companies like Facebook, Google, if you follow this path. And you can, you can start applying for jobs as soon as you finish part two. But I think part three is really important as well. So let's go now to the path I want you guys to follow. So here is the mind map of the computer science education. I've split it into three different parts. Part one and part two are enough for you to start applying for jobs, but part three will enable you to go to big companies that are really interested in algorithms. So first, foundation. Let's go to foundation. The first thing I do is getting a very basic and gentle introduction to programming, and I think Code Academy does a very good job at introducing beginners to the basic concepts of computer science, of showing the syntax, and I'd argue Python is the best language for a beginner. It, it's really easy to set up the environment, it's, the syntax is very close to English, so if usually at schools they, they introduce you to C first, I think C has a lot of complicated stuff to set it up that might scare beginners so python is the is the language to go and don't don't worry too much about the language i think once you get the grasp and the concepts of one language learning other languages are really easy 
So just just go with Python. But this is not enough. This is just the basics. This is just the beginning. So now that you have a general idea of if and else statements, loops, all the basic ideas, you need to have a more rigorous training. You need to do a lot of problem sets that I think Code Academy don't provide you. That's why I'd recommend you to go to EDX, search for CS50, which is the introductory course at Harvard University. And then I do, and all these courses I'm recommending to you guys, I've, I've either done them or I've skimmed through them. So this course, I haven't actually done it, but my sister and my roommate have done it and it's amazing. So with, in CS50, you have a very good, a very good grasp of all the major fields of computer science. The lecture is amazing. He is very passionate about the field, and the problem sets are the crown jewel of this course. Because without practice, you won't be good. Computer science is like playing an instrument. If you don't practice, if you don't have a rigorous training you won't be good so the problem with code academy is that they teach you very easy stuff you need to struggle computer programming is about struggling solving problems and i think this this course will give you just that and they have a lot of breadth so they show you beginnings of algorithm some web development so you have a very good general idea of what you have to do for a even more rigorous foundation, I do the MIT Introduction to Computer Science. I've done this course. It is challenging, but if you've done CS50, you, you're pretty pre prepared for this course. There is a huge overlap because of, between these two courses, but I still recommend you doing it again. I think redundancy, especially in foundation studies, is very important. These are the core concepts that will take you, that you'll be using pretty much every day as a programmer. So it is important for you to have a good grasp. It's important to practice over and over again the foundations. If you do these two courses, you'll be set. You'll be set to go. You can even do them both at the same time. I think it's possible for you to do them at the same time if you have time. But they're kind of time consuming, so I do one and then the other. Finally, if you still feel, I really recommend, as I said, I really recommend you practicing exhaustively. I'd recommend you go to this website. This website is called Coding Bat. It was done by a Stanford professor that realized that those small logic problems people find every day, they need a lot of practice. So they found, he, he created this website where you can, you have just small problems and you come here and you see the tests and you see if you pass them. I think it's really good. I do all of the Python ones if you want to, maybe even the Java ones, especially recursion, because it's not on the Python one. And it just gives you that extra practice. If you think you're good, if you think you're good with uh, MIT introduction to computer science, that's okay, you can move to part two. But I think, Having this strong foundation is really important. If you do these four courses, you have a great, great uh, place to, 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 to improve from. So part two, so with this part, you'll be able to do all the basic operations of programming language, but you still can't do anything practical with it. And you're paid to create values to company. If you just know some theory, you won't be able to make money out of it. You won't be able to produce an app or produce a website, a web app. So this is where part two comes into the picture. Part two is practical programming. It's getting those concepts and learning some frameworks, some tools that will make you productive and efficient. And there are two ways you can get this practical experience. You can go the coding bootcamp route, which I really recommend if you have the resources. I think it's, for me, I did one called Le Wagon. It's a French one and it's amazing. It was a very good experience. I met amazing people. 
I built an app called uh, Kenja Phase. It's in Portuguese. I'll just put the link on the description. But it's a very thorough uh, web app. We use Ruby on Rails, Ruby, JavaScript, jQuery, uh, databases. So everything you need to build a web app and all the technologies that you need to be productive. I think you'll get more from the bootcamp if you have this foundation, because then you don't have to struggle learning the basics, right? If you don't have the resources, there is also a lot of good online resources. One of them that I love is Free Code Camp. Free Code Camp is amazing. You can do the front end, the back end. I just stick to the front end and back end. Uh, just because you don't want to waste too much time in data visualization it's important but maybe not that much and they have really cool projects that's what I like about it you can actually practice what you learn through projects uh, you have Udemy as well I think the key thing about being self-educated in this practical part is for you to learn the technology so go to learn Ruby on Rails Ruby and start building apps start building apps because the apps are where you actually learn you have you don't know how to do a certain thing then you look it up you ask for questions and you ask online so it's really important for you here you're just solving problems and stuff here you have actually to get a product working so you can either learn a, a Android, iOS, or web, uh, web development, but build apps, build a portfolio for yourself. And after this part too, I think you're ready to look for jobs. You're already productive, you have a good foundation. But if you wanna apply to big companies like Facebook, Amazon, they will ask algorithm scores. So algorithms, I, I view as an extension of this foundation. You're learning new tricks. You're learning new ways of thinking that will help you solve complicated problems. They might not be useful, as useful as the foundation, as the, the practical stuff in, a, in your daily work, but it's still pretty, it's pretty important for passing interviews. So stuff like stacks, queues, linked lists, a lot of data structures that help you solve problems. There are a lot of ways for you to learn this, but I believe the best way is to go to this website called litcode.com or there is also hacker rank and you go to problems, you have six, you can see the topics here, you can see all the topics and the companies that ask those questions and you can filter by how hard it is. Here you see a graph of how many you've done, how many you have left. They have contests. There is actually one today. I'm going to take part. So it's like a mock interview. It's just a great environment. And if you find you don't understand something, for example, you've never heard about hash tables before. You look it up. Instead of going through a course before and then doing this, I'd recommend you start practicing right away the interview questions and looking for the theory afterwards. I think it's much more effective. On, on the Open Source Society website, which gives you a very good curriculum for learning computer science, they recommend the Stanford algorithm scores, which I have started and is really good, but I think it's not the most effective way for you to learn how to solve interview problems. I think just practicing it is the best way. If you go, if you do over a hundred problems or just all the easy problems from the algorithms, I think you're pretty well prepared for most interviews. And they might be challenging at the beginning, but if you solve one per day, you're going to be pretty good. That's actually what I'm doing in this channel. I'm solving one lead code problem a day. So if you want to check out my videos explaining how to solve them, I think they are a good resource. There is a ton of other resources online. So I think that's pretty much it, guys. Like you have three, you have three, three ways of learning computer science three steps to learning computer science. And some people here who have studied computer science, 
might argue, oh, but this is incomplete. Like, how about computer architecture? How about discrete math? How about operating systems? I've taken these classes, those classes, I think they're super interesting, but they are not asked in the interviews. People don't ask about it. So if you want, it's interesting, I think, as an extra. Once you're employed and you want to learn more about computers, which you should, then you start learning those extra goodies. But for now, for getting a job, for transitioning careers, for learning effectively, you got to have a straight path, in my opinion. you got to be pragmatic. And this is a pragmatic path to learn computer science. Instead of going from one place to other and never evolving, never improving, if you follow this step by step map, I guarantee you, you'll be prepared for applying for jobs, for interviews, and I'd argue even for big companies. So thanks a lot for following the channel. Subscribe if you like this content, share it with your friends, give me feedback. Follow the algorithms problems I'm putting up, I'm uploading. And thanks for being here, guys. I hope I find you guys into in, in the computer science world. Thank you.